Ah, okay. Okay. So I hope that started. It seems the the network on my my laptop is the issue. So I hope that recording it starts. I can see from my end that it's recording. Is is it also recording from your end, guys? Yes, yes. Okay, so hello, cool. hello, cool. so our class on Hiroko, so maybe just, you know, I will start with a small discussion. So Hiroko, what is Hiroko? Who has used Hiroko before? Why do we need to use Hiroko? Any volunteers? I have seen a number of people using Hiroko already. We are just introducing it now, but I have seen a couple of you use Hiroko for your web app development. Yes, if you say how, go ahead. I can hear you, but there seems to be some slight, uh, should I say, interference with your audio? Could you just maybe speak up again? Uh, okay, maybe uh, I just see that I've been having problems with my mic, and I was not sure if you could hear me. Is this better? Yes, it's, I think it's better. I think I can make out words. Yeah. So just brush up uh, and help with the uh, uh, plot to uh, get what, what what we can do or what we have done in uh, in our project, not only the music machine learning. Uh, I think that's what Roku is all about. Uh, as I said, I've never used Heroku, but I guess I saw something very important, which I think is very important, which is, I think somebody said uh, in, maybe in somewhere in this uh, meeting that Heroku is no longer free, because if, you, if it's not free, I Maybe you can uh, tell us if it's free or not, if the thing is uh, actually true. Sorry, so I got that question, but I didn't get it. You're saying that Hiroko is no longer what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, just, I saw somebody wrote in this uh, group, Hiroko is no longer free. It was free, but it is no longer free. I didn't... Uh, confirm that. Maybe I thought you can confirm that first. Okay, so I see Nat Nile. Nat Nile has something to add first before I give my opinion. Nat Nile? Uh, last time I hosted, I think it was for uh, week one. It was free, but they have uh, some limitations like uh, I think before the SQLite and the MySQL databases were somehow free. You can have uh, an instance running for free, but now they don't have that. They don't offer that anymore. But I managed to host to host like for free without using the DB part. Okay. Okay. okay so I just want to cut. Thank you. Okay, so maybe to give my opinion before we even start, I did host mine yesterday night and I saw the notice, the one they're saying that the free tier will no longer be available, but it was very specific on uh, some, some certain databases, like was it just three Postgres? Let me just check. They were specific on just three databases. I've seen that the MySQL is still free. You need to add a credit card but they still provide an add-on that is free, although you have to add your credit card to the site. So I have hosted, I don't know, I have hosted, let me just, I think I saw, let me just check. Yeah. yeah. I, what you guys are talking about, I saw that information yesterday. Okay, I can't I can't seem to track it now. Just as you're saying you see. You've seen some communication, the one that I'm looking for or 
just yes. No, not yet. I was replying to your yawns that it's they have stopped their free time. Oh, okay. Oh, but guys, uh, I think most of you guys, there's something you've been mentioning. It's when you're using a database, that is when they, when you're using some form of database, that is when they have somehow stopped that um, that service for free. But if you just have a Streamlit, maybe like a Streamlit application, you're just maybe trying to communicate some um, some some visualizations, maybe your models, which is what uh, mainly we have for this week. You want to to have that that predictive model on a deployment on a deployment on a deployed environment. I think you could just do that without necessarily adding the data. So I'll show you something else uh, when we start this tutorial. Something we were able to achieve during our my time, and uh, maybe we could also take that approach. While I was also doing some research, I also saw a way you could just add data directly from Excel and use Excel instead of a database yeah, a for your data. Of course, it's not it's not the best. And I think with time, we can just, that it's good that we've noticed that Heroku is actually no longer free to some extent. And um, yeah, maybe we'll find another deployment, deployment platform for next time. Although guys, the information that I saw, it said that that starts late November, like somewhere November this year. So I don't know why you're saying it's still not free. And the, I can't see it now, but that information was like something like it will from November this year. That is the communication I got from Hiroko. Okay. So anyway, that was... Uh, Let's just say start to Hiroko by Fiseha. Back to my question. Has anyone used Hiroko before? Just maybe getting that comfortable with deploying an application to uh, an environment. Yes, Bekalu. You want to tell us about your experience with Hiroko? I know I've had some weird experiences with Hiroko. Belako, you want to give us experience with Hiroko? Bekale. Oh, see, a Postgres database uh, upload, uh, deployed to Hiroku. So was that recently? How recent was that, Bekalu? Two months, two months, two months. Okay, two months is a long time. We cannot, we cannot say a lot about that. But yeah, two months seems to be a longer time. Okay, anyway, so let me just share my screen and have this little discussion. So... For those who have not hosted anything on uh, Heroku, the reason as we are introducing Heroku is from week zero, week one, and uh, I don't think week two, but week zero and week one, you guys created this Streamlit application. And uh, for some instances, you do actually want to communicate your dashboard to more than one person. Like for example, in this week's challenge, you're given this scenario where you, where Rossman has almost 1500 stores and uh, everyone from this 1500 stores located maybe countrywide or globally, you cannot just come to your laptop and access the work that you've deployed on your own local host machine. That's where platforms like Heroku come for the longest time they've been doing it for free it's so sad to hear that they are, they'll start to charge for their services so you deploy your application and you can just share that link and everyone gets to interact with your web app so the target for this week for example is to create that model that predictive model save it serialize it and save it your best your perfect model and then form a web app from that model application from that model that you've created. So I also know that some of you have uh, added models to a Streamlit application before. 
week and for this Heroku class we won't be starting from Streamlit we won't be starting from adding models to your Streamlit app uh, I'll be assuming that you already have a Streamlit application or uh, maybe just a Flask even it could be a Flask application I think I'll mention a little bit about the Flask application and then so what we are starting is that you already have a Flask application and now we just want to deploy that application that you've hosted locally to Heroku. Okay, so with that said, if you want to follow through, that is a really great idea so that you can get to deal with some errors. I have hosted to Heroku like twice or thrice and every time I always get an error. Even this week I did get a lot of errors. It took me a lot of time. And then one of the few things we'll be mentioning is just how somehow like to to read the logs given given by Heroku because we do give a lot of logs and this trust me guys you'll get a lot of errors if you have not hosted before it's really yeah it comes with its own issues okay so I'll go ahead and start maybe just share a screen. And we'll start with a Streamlit app because that's what we've introduced, guys, from week zero. I already have a Streamlit app that I did back in week zero, the one that I showed you guys in week zero. So I will be deploying that to Heroku. It's already deployed, but I'll show you the steps to deploy it to to Heroku. Okay, so... Hello. So... On deploying a Streamlit app to Heroku, or mainly just when you're doing any form of deployment, there are, uh, there's one major thing that will be very, that will be needed in like all form of your deployments. If you're, if you're using, especially from like GitHub, a GitHub and a deployment kind of connection, there's this one file that you'll always need to have. That is the requirements.txt file. I don't know if all of us, we are comfortable with generating this requirements.txt file because if this requirements.txt file does not reflect what is in your code, what it is in your work, your deployment will definitely have an error. I am not even joking. But yes, Ejid, Ejid has given us a really nice and easy command that we get to generate the requirements.txt file. It's just pip freeze. So let me let me stop the screenshot because I think I uh, will do both screenshot and code. So let me so share code. So sorry, I have so many errors here. So let's just share. Okay, so as Ajit has said, the command pip freeze. It goes through your entire environment, the environment that you are developing your work and gets every library you are using within the environment. And that is why, guys, again, for most of projects, most of Python projects, we keep saying create a virtual environment so that the libraries are actually tailored just to that environment so that this document cannot be as huge. So anytime you do like a pip freeze, I have not added what Egypt has said, you can get all the libraries used within your environment. So if you are if you if you you're doing a project in just your environment at all without having like a virtual environment, then you will get all the libraries installed locally on your machine, which can be very extensive, even when you're using such a small Yeah, I think that is, who is that? Is that Anjanet? Yes, Anjanet, that's exactly what I'm saying. If you do pip freeze and you don't have like a virtual environment set for your current project, you will get everything installed in your local machine. And that's why we advise create that virtual environment and then do your pip freeze within your environment. So you notice I did do a pip freeze. And I get a list of uh, a lot of libraries, most of which I have installed on my machine. So all of this environment, all of these libraries that you get, you'll just look. So there's no need to worry. If, you are, if your Streamlit application is working locally, then pip freeze will not take a lot of time. It's just pip freeze. And then when I did pip freeze, you just see the list of... Um, 
the list of libraries, but if you want to say that the requirements.txt file, which is one of the call generation, that's when now you do the freeze. And then the output of that you set to requirements, requirements.txt. So I already have the requirements.txt file. So what you'll just do, you'll just modify it. If it is exactly the same libraries in that file, they will not change. If there's something missing, maybe you've added some new code, you did some new imports, you've done some deep learning, and now you have a tensor flow. So it will just take that and add it to the already existing. So even if you already have the requirements.txt, when you do it, every single time that file will just be populated with more and more libraries okay so we have our first file that is the requirements.txt file something else when we talk about uh, Heroku when Heroku is starting it will always look for this file called the proc file whether you're doing a Streamlit application, whether you're doing a Flask application, I think even a fast API application, I am not so sure about that. I haven't hosted a fast API application, but I know for sure that a Flask application, at the same time, a Streamlit application, Heroku will start by looking for, for, looking, looking yeah. for this proc file. So, Mohammed, is that a question? Yes, I have a question. Um, when I'm deploying, uh, when I'm initiating a virtual environment, do I need to reinstall all the packages that I am using in that specific project? Or um, the, the virtual environment will take all of uh, those libraries and uh, methods that I'm using and um, using it in that specific environment? Uh, did you get my question? Uh, anyone hear me? Hello guys, can you hear me? Did I did I drop for a second? Oh yeah, yes. Um, so I was, I was speaking. So I noticed Mohammed spoke, then I started to reply, but he kept saying he cannot hear me. So no one could hear my reply. So I start just from the reply directly. I did not hear the reply. Okay, so the Wi-Fi, I think the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi is what has gone, which is exactly why my laptop has also dropped from the meeting, but I am on mobile network. I think it will just communicate like that for a while. So as I was saying, Mohammed, maybe you can come again with a question, but I thought you asked, when you create that virtual environment, does it get its libraries from the local environment, or is it just a new space that you have to install everything? Was that the question? Mohammed. Is Mohammed still here? Mohammed has dropped. Mohammed has dropped. Okay, so maybe we'll wait for him to come back until I answer that. But if I did get it like that, if that was the question, just to answer you guys. So anytime you create a virtual environment, it does not come with libraries. And that is why sometimes you'll find you've created a virtual environment and you're doing import pandas and you keep saying you don't have pandas and you're like, but I do have pandas. No, in your virtual environment, you have to do the installations afresh so that those libraries are tailored to your current project. So most of the time, especially if you create your environment, if you create your virtual environment with something like Anaconda, it gives you the option of maybe choosing a few things to initiate your environment with. 
like a Python environment, so, okay, so which Python version are you going to install to that environment? And then maybe just a few prerequisites for that specific virtual environment. Okay, so as I was saying, now that you can't see my screen, but as I was saying, you'd need this proc file. Heroku always looks for this proc, proc file. And uh, in proc file, it only states like a few things. It's like when we do, it's like when you do a CML and it's looking for this CML file to run your test or to run your train, whatever. So Heroku looks for this proc file to know, okay, so what kind of environment do I need to set up and what exactly, what exact file will I be running? So that, that is what Heroku is looking for in the proc file. So you guys cannot see my screen. I don't know if how I should share the content of this proc file. Mm, how should I share the content? They just type. Mm -hmm. So let me check. I think the Wi-Fi is back. Google <laughs> Maybe you can send it to someone and then let them share. If it's yes. a link on G Drive. Yes, I could actually do that. So for the time being, actually, let me share that. Let me actually do that before it disappears again. So do we have someone else from the Academy team here? Azaria, Azaria, is that you? Um, um, yes, Anastasia. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Can I share, let me share this presentation with you in case my Wi-Fi misbehaves again so that you can just present from your machine. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so the that's the file that I've shared the link to the file. Uh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm only just a moment. No, it's okay. I can present now. I think I'm I'm okay now. My Wi-Fi is back in case it it misbehaves again. But for you guys, I don't think you can access that. I've only shared with uh, Zaria. I don't think you guys can access that. Sorry, maybe I'll share later. Uh, but yes, just yes. I've only shared it with uh, Zaria for now. I don't have all your emails somewhere, so maybe I'll share that later, or maybe just add it to the week. Yeah, I could actually just add it to the week folder. Anyway, so we go ahead. So as I was saying, the proc file. And in proc file, there's usually just like a few lines. And the first part where it says web, oops, how do I go back? The first part where it says web, this just shows that Heroku will be running a web application. And this web application will, will be looking for this setup.sh file, which is actually a bash file. A setup.sh is a bash file. And at the same time, it will be running a streamlit application. So for the streamlit run, you just specify your application. So mine is in a folder called dashboard, and this is the name of that file. That's why it looks like that. But you just specify the location and the file name of your streamlit application. So something else that is like a prerequisite for Heroku is the setup.sh file. So actually, you guys what you notice is that uh, Heroku runs on like an, a Linux kind of environment and Ubuntu kind of environment. And that is where we are setting up a bash file, a bash script instead of like a .py or like just a normal Windows file. That's where we are setting up a .sh file. So, oops. So again, if you are if you are deploying a streamlit application, this setup.sh file should look exactly like this. Like you don't have to change. Okay, so, so this this is actually updated. I'm sorry, this one was giving me an error. Let me show you the 
the right one setup.sh file setup.sh file there it is yeah so i hope you can see my screen your setup.sh file if you are deploying a streamlit application will always look like this like you don't need to change anything here and what this file is doing it's just creating a directory a streamlit directory and then it's creating this credentials.toml so just a credentials file and then a configurations file so in your credentials file you just have like just something general your email and then in your configuration file you just specify a few things like i don't know you guys the ports yeah the ports so this file does not need to change at all you just copy this to your setup.sh and you are good to go for your streamlit application okay so you have Mm, first, I don't know how do I share this again. This is not visible, guys. This is not visible. It's not visible. Maybe just I copy. Yeah, if you can zoom in just a little bit. Mm. See, I'm trying to zoom. I don't even know is it. Am I doing it wrong? So I've shared the contents of uh, setup.sh nothing in that file needs to change it should work exactly as it is you don't need to change anything for your setup.sh file so you have your setup.sh file i am hoping you've already created a requirements.txt file and again the proc file so let me share the content of the proc file as well so proc file is my proc file Copy. So the .sh file, the .sh file should just be in your like your local directory. Your directory it does not need to be in any folder. So when you just look at your structure, let me just share this okay, first. So yeah, for the lock for the proc file, you guys can just change the location of your file. I am just using a specific file so you can just change the location and the naming of your file. But when you look at the structure of my work from the side here you can see yes I have my C I have my GitHub files, I have my dashboard files, my test. So in just your local structure, that's where I have my setup.sh and it's the same place I have my proc file. So in creating a proc file, you just create it like a file and you just name it proc file. The moment you name it proc file, you noticed it changed on the side here from just being like nothing. It changed immediately. I wrote, I wrote proc file. It recognizes it as a Heroku kind of kind of document. So you just create a proc file and that's okay. And then set up, of course, just set up .sh and it recognizes it as a as bash as a bash file. Okay, so we have the three, and next thing we go to is creating a, a Hiroko account, setting up a Hiroko account. So you can do this in two ways. You can do this using their UI, just logging into Hiroko, setting up the account, or you can use, you can do this using command line. So here I have shown step by step on how to do it on their UI, but at the end we also have on a way of doing it with um, with the CLI. So first, for those who love the UI, let's just go through these steps one by one. And of course, the first thing you do is go to Hiroko, Hiroko.com. So that's Hiroko.com. I am already logged in. Let me just share a more a link that is more just Hiroko.com. Yeah. 
Roku.com. Copy. So you just log in to Hiroko.com, www.hiroko.com. And if you don't have an account with Hiroko.com, it's a free account. You can just set up your free account. Let me try to log out. Maybe if you log out, you can see the steps. Well, so if you are new to Hiroko, just set up your Hiroko account. And then after setting up a Hiroko account, of course, you've confirmed your email address. You log into Hiroko. I don't know why I logged out. Do you remember my password? Oh, my God. Oh my god, where did I log out? Um, I think I'll be going on from the CLI from here because I don't know why I logged out. I don't remember my password. That's for real. Hello. Oh. Oof, I remember my password, thank God. Uh, guys, you see the, the, the notice I was telling you about? It's starting November 28th. The Hiroko for Dinos, Postgres, and Redis. That's what will no longer be available, the free versions for this three specific databases. This is exactly what I was looking for. So I think for my SQL will still be free. So yeah, you could you could use my SQL for now. Okay, so for those ones who are doing it for the first time, could I have maybe someone who's doing it for the first time so that we can follow up with them where they are so far? Is there someone who's doing it for the first time so that we can just guide them? Because I don't okay, yes, Margaret. Margaret, where are you? Um, where am I, where exactly? Sorry. In the setting up, in the setup, in the process, where are you, do you have a proc file ready? Do you have a setup? No, ready? Do no, you? no, nothing is ready. Okay, I see Tamar, Tamar, how far are you? Uh, I just signed in and mm -hmm. they are telling me to go and check my email. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, okay, 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 do that. Margaret, um, I, I have set up the number two and three, but number one, uh, I, I think I missed it. I think it I is a proc it. file. A proc sorry, sorry. It is a proc file, so you just name it proc file. <laughs> yes, it is a proc file, so you just name it proc file, no extension. And then the content, I have shared the content of this profile, so it's just web to indicate it's a web app. And then you reference that setup.sh file, and then the normal way we run a streamlit app, so just streamlit run, and then your streamlit application. No, 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 no. The profile does not need to be in dashboard agent. The, prof the profile just needs to be in your root, root directory. Because when we connect GitHub, when we connect GitHub with this, with this Heroku, it will just be looking for that file from your root, root directory. Okay, so I see time is going. And uh, so <laughs> for setting up using the UI, so when you create that account, Tamar, have you, are you done with creating that account? Not yet. Um, I'm confirming the password. Oh, okay. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I don't know if I should wait and see. There's only 20 minutes. Yes, I don't know if is who who has just mentioned that. Yes, your hands, the proc file, the requirements.txt file, and the setup.sh file, they all need to be in your root root directory, those three, because Heroku will be looking for them from the root root directory. So for those who have logged in, I think I'll just go on.
So the first thing you do is you create a new web application. So you just go, when you log in to your dashboard, to your hero code dashboard, there's a button here called new. And so you just create a new application. And this application, you can give it whatever name you want. So whatever name I want, maybe let me say just my app name, my app name. And this name needs to be unique. So you say, you say it's not available because this is like a domain. It's what will actually create your link. What will actually create the link to your application. So it needs to be unique. It seems this one is already taken. So let's try Anna, Anastasia app. That one is available. So that is an, an application that is available. I did share the profile content. I see you guys are asking for the profile content. And I did have, I did share the profile content somewhere up here. Yes. So that is the profile content. It has been shared again. But the last part, dashboard, stroke, streamlit. And whatever that is, uh, that is, uh, that is where my Streamlit application is. I'm referring to my Streamlit application, so make sure you just change that last part. And um, and then it has shared again the content of the setup.sh file. That one does not need to change at all. It should work exactly like it is. Okay, so we're creating our new app. Most of the time, I don't change my region. It's always just, you see there's only two, US or Europe. So you always leave it at US and then you create your application. So as I was saying, you could do this with CLI or you could do this with Heroku UI. So for those who really love the terminal, the step is to download, to download the Heroku CLI to download the Heroku CLI and the link to downloading the Heroku CLI. Let me just take that for you. For those ones who really love the terminal, you just need to open the Heroku CLI. Download. So I'm just opening it here to show you how to navigate. I don't know if there's Linux version. So the only thing about Heroku as a prerequisite is that you need to have JIT installed. I'm assuming by now everyone has JIT installed in their machine. So uh, we won't go a lot into that. And then down here, if you're doing it on Mac OS, they give you the they give you the the command to do it in Mac OS. But for those of us Windows users, of course you get your installer a 64 bit or a 32 bit. So I already have the 64-bit installer installed on my machine. So of course, just like any other installer, you download it, open it, run it, next, 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 until you finish it, and it's installed in your machine. And I think down here, it's where we have the Linux version. So yeah, install with Ubuntu. So we also have uh, the... What is this called? The command for installing CLI on Ubuntu or Linux. So everything can be found from the link I've just shared with you. Okay, so the moment you install it, if you install CLI on your machine, it can just be accessed directly from, from your command prompt. So either from your CMD, I don't know about, okay, so either from your CMD or maybe if you're using terminal, whatever terminal in Linux, for me, I just opened a PowerShell. I kind of use the PowerShell. And um, the first thing you need to do, to do because now you're not using, you're not using the, um, the, command, the, the user interface, is just to do a Heroku login. So when you do Heroku login, it takes you to this site. Now the UI, UI part of it, you just put your email address and your password yes. if you already have a Heroku yeah. account. So just press any key. Of course, you just follow instructions. And um, I don't know if it will do as, as the first time because this is, uh, I've already logged in. 
Yeah, so you'll be taken to such an environment where you're told to Heroku to log into Heroku CLI, and so you just log into your Heroku CLI. I think you uh, they'll request. Okay, so I've, I'm already logged in. That way it says logged in, but for first time users, they will request for your email address and your password. So you just provide those two, and then you'll be logged in to Heroku CLI. The next thing you need to do, the, the next thing we did in UI is to create the application. And uh, how we do that is using Heroku, create, and then the name of your application. So let me let me try Anastasia again. Anastasia 2. Let me try just Anastasia. Anastasia app. But I think it fails because we already have this created. Let's see. So it says it's already taken, and you guys know why this is happening. It's because I already have this created from the front end the other time. So if this name needs to be unique. I'll keep stating that. So if you maybe you started with UI and you want to connect your CLI to your UI, there's also that code uh, for connecting your Heroku CLI with uh, the one the app that you already have on your Heroku platform. So you just do that is Heroku JIT, and then you give it remote, and then minus A, and then you give it the name of your application. So let me use the and the one that I've just created now. So I think I'll I'll just share this presentation because I have these commands uh, written well in that command. So it's just Heroku, and the the next part is just say showing that I am connecting to my report uh, my remote application, which is called Anastasia app you saw me create this app so i think this connection will happen smoothly without an issue so yes that happened successfully set git remote to heroku yes so i have my cli connected to my git repository okay then goes to the next step connecting your heroku connecting your heroku to your github where now you have your streamlit application or where you just have your code your requirements.txt, your profile, and your setup.ssh. So I will, of course, I will start with um, with the front-end version, how to do it on front-end. Then we will come back to CLI. For CLI, guys, just take a rest. And... Um, Yes, that is it exactly. But of course, you've you've uh, you've, you've, you've misspelled my name. That's not the name of my application. But yeah, everything. No, no, it should be Heroku Jit, Heroku Jit, and then remote minus A, and then the name of your application. So you have to start with Heroku first. That command starts with Heroku. So Heroku and then Jit remote then minus A and then the name of your application. So if you're doing it, if you're doing it from front end, the other thing you will notice. Oh, actually, it, from the front end, you you get a guideline on how to do it with Heroku CLI. Just everything we've done. So not most, not most of the things. Not most of the things we do here, because I'm assuming you already have a. You already have a JIT application. So here where they see JIT in it, I'm assuming you're indicating that JIT in it when you're creating your repository. So most of this is just where so you're creating a new repository. And then when we are doing some deployment, so I think we'll come back to this later. So for the UI, for those who are connecting directly to GitHub, you just go to the next tab where you connect your GitHub. You connect your GitHub with your Heroku. And when you click that, it gives you access. So for the first timers again, if Heroku, you're doing it for the first time, I think I added I added it to the presentation. If you are if you are linking your GitHub to your Heroku for the first time, it will prompt you to log in. It will prompt you to connect to GitHub. Let me just expand this. When you're connecting for the first time, it will prompt you to connect to GitHub. So for first timers, it will look something more like this, not what you've just seen. And then you just search the name of your repository 
and you connect to that repository so i think it i don't know I'm, i think it will ask you for credentials i'm not so sure if it will ask you for credentials for your github but yeah if you just get prompt for for the credentials of github yes, just provide and then the next thing we do is just to search for the repository that you want to to connect with hero so that is exactly where i am and you just come down here and we search for that for that repository and the repository that i have my streamlit app on is the week zero the week zero work so that's why i'm searching for twitter it should be a twitter analysis Six, let me see. Yes, just this when you don't want to use the terminal. Item could not be retrieved. Okay, so I just connect again. This is what I meant. So you connect again to GitHub. I think I have lost that connection to GitHub. Of course, it prompts you to log into GitHub. So for first timers, that will be it will be a little bit more. And then okay, so I come and search my repository. It's called Twitter. Yes, and I get access to all the repositories that started the name Twitter. So um, I want to connect to this repository. So I just click connect. And just like that, you have your app connected to your, to your repository. And the next thing after that, remember you already have, you already have a, a proc file. You also have a requirements.txt file and you also have a sub.sh. I keep saying this because after connecting your Heroku to your CLI, the next thing you just need to do is click a button called deploy. And you could do either you enable automatic deploys and enable automatic deploys, what this means, anytime you push to your GitHub, your Heroku application will be updating. And if you click this button here that says, wait for CI to pass before deploy, of course, this is this is advisable if your CI is working perfectly. But if you keep getting those, if you keep getting those issues from your CML or your GitHub actions, please don't enable this. Especially if you are still like your GitHub is still like on the testing stage. But if uh, you are working maybe with a company and yes, we've paid for Heroku and you're using this, then it will be actually nice to enable the CI so that all the continuous integration checks can actually pass before it updates something that has been deployed online. So you could do enable an automatic deploy, but just for the manual deploy, you come down here and you click, you click on deploy branch. As easy as that, of course, it will do some form of installation. This is happening from your requirements.txt file, from your setup.sh. Everything here now is, it, it is communicating with those three files I've been mentioning all the time so as this run for those who are cli lovers we'll just go to your to your version again and uh, for your version so from here what you just do is you commit you commit the changes you've made with your um, with your heroku so i, I noticed for the cli guys, there's something i forgot to mention you'll notice that when i'm doing the heroku login heroku creates everything i'm doing on heroku I am doing it in a specific folder, the Twitter Analysis B6. This is my local repository folder. So I'm so sorry I forgot to mention that. You don't just do it anywhere. So you do it in your local repository folder. That's where you do this Heroku command. So of course you do a git add because you've added that uh, Heroku connection. And then it is not a command. Oh, sorry. Jeeps add, I think I did that quickly. I added the dots before, so to add, and then of course, Jeet commit. Jeet commit minus M, and then your commit message. So commit message. Oops. Sorry about that. My phone just fell. Okay, then you do a commit. So I, I don't know if I want to do this commit. 
let me just do the commit but i won't push my changes because i already have some some things going on and then after you do your git add and you do your git commit the next thing you do is you push to heroku this is now the line that deploys to heroku the same thing where on the ui we just clicked the deploy branch on cli this is now the code that does the deployment to heroku i think that is uh, is it heroku git push heroku it's just the git heroku git push and then the name of your branch so if you are pushing to your main branch you write main if your branch is called master of course master if you are doing it on a development branch so you, again main is just the name of the branch that you are doing your changes to and the one that you want your heroku to connect with this is to mean that your heroku can actually can actually connect with just one of your branches if you have like seven branches you can only co you can actually connect with just one branch so let me confirm this code i think it's it's yeah git push let me just confirm that oh sorry it's git push heroku main i'd say it the opposite way it's git push and then heroku main did push and then he recommend yes just yes you heard something told no my question is what if after that we make a pull request will that work in on the main if we did not push it on the main branch okay so i don't get that question so you're, you're asking if you do a jit pull uh -huh. just go ahead the question is if i push it on a, a given branch and after i make a pull, a pull request uh, and merge it with the with the main branch will it will that work in the main branch no 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 hiroko will just be connected to your development branch okay so unless maybe... the next time unless unless the next time you want to deploy and now instead of doing maybe a jit push Hiroko dev, then you do a JIT push Hiroko main, then it will now connect to your main branch. It's the right. form of deployment that you do that connects it to your branch. All right. Thank you. Okay, so I want to do this because you'll notice I'm accessing the exact same repository for the same exact application. But for CLI, up to there, you've already pushed your app to Hiroko and it will give you a number of logs, which is mostly like what you're seeing on the online. Oh, so it just finished. But the, the section I was showing you guys, it was installing. A lot of things was installing, collecting, so whatever. Everything on your requirements.txt file, of course, you'll get all those logs directly from your terminal. And that's why I think for the Linux lovers, it's easier because now you get to see what's going on directly from, from the logs. So immediately after you do that, in your CLI, CLI it will give you a link, a link to your application. And from the UI, we just get down here your app was successfully deployed if it actually ran so we'll actually look at look at some errors that i got this morning and uh yeah so you just click view and if your application ran successfully you just get access to your heroku deployed web application and that's it you have your streamlit app deployed to heroku so a few things I'd like to mention for those who are following and something I noticed this morning. How to view from terminal just yes, after the logs complete running and if you don't have any error, the CLI will give you a link. This link that I'm getting here, you'll get it directly from CLI. So you just take that link and you put it on your website and you can access that application. Good. So as you can see, I have my app running and it is on Heroku. So I can just share this app with anyone. Okay, so that's we have the first error. We have the first error. So not such file or is, is that that error, Margaret, it does not look conclusive. So Margaret, I, this is what I wanted to mention. For Windows users, for Windows users, 
you will get mainly that error because Heroku runs on Heroku runs on a Linux kind of environment. And if everything is working locally for your Streamlit application, when you did when you did a, a pip freeze, when you did a pip freeze for your comments.txt file, if you guys noticed when I did the pip freeze, I didn't commit these changes because I knew I would get that error as well. There are two specific libraries at the middle called Pywin and Pywin PT or something. These two files, Margaret, check if you have these two files, the Pywin 32 and the Pywin PTY. These two files are specifically used for a Windows kind of environment. And since Heroku is not a Windows-based kind of environment rather than it is a Linux, just remove these two specific files from your requirements.txt and this should search. Should... Um, I, I have those two files on my requirements.txt. Remove them and and change and uh, do what? Remove them and um, and push commit and commit it. Yeah, push the changes. Just remove those two. For every Windows user, if you have two files, the PyWin and the PyWin PTY, these are just Windows-based libraries and they won't work on a Linux environment. So remove those two files. And if that was the only issue and your system was working perfectly, it should actually, it should run. Okay. So the other thing which I neglected for this tutorial on purpose is when you are using the dashboard, the MySQL. So let me let me first remove the text file. I don't want that ever. Let me remove this too. So then let me change. I do have two Streamlit applications. The other one is an application that is using a MySQL database. And guys, I didn't solve this error. So I'm just showing you the kind of error you'll be getting and how you can approach it for those who want to use it. So dashboard. The UI. Okay, same. So let me push those changes. So it is my sequel on Okay, so I have deployed to my main branch. Of course, I have deployed to my main branch, which is what is connected to my application. And I wanted to show you guys this error because if you're going to use a MySQL kind of database, you're going to need to set up the clear DB and add-on that requires a credit card, which unfortunately I don't have. That's why I couldn't, I couldn't set this up. But let me just deploy this application again. So of course, if you're in CLI, do a JIT add, JIT commit, and then JIT, JIT push Heroku main. But for my case, again, if I had done an automatic deploy, this would have been easier, but then, okay, so I'm doing it manually, deploy. Okay, maybe share the full content of your error, like, cause the first one you shared was not so conclusive. Margaret, maybe just share. Yikes. So I don't know if you guys can see, my system is telling me I've reached, I think this is what you guys meant, but it's not free anymore. I have reached my concurrent builds limit. Seems I've been building a lot for, for for this tutorial, so
Okay, so that's that's something else. That era looks different than what I thought it was. That's a very different era. Which file? Which file is it referencing, Margaret? Because I don't think I know which file that is. Do you have this file somewhere in your in your code or in your txt file? Do you have you been able to just track this file? Um, let me try and find it, and then I'll get back to you. Although I'm not, sh I'm not so sure what kind of file it is, but let me track it. Um, I found the first two files on my requirement.txt have mm -hmm. uh they have they have the same format AI O H T T P file. Oh yeah. Um the one the one on my era. So the file D B A D B L D A I O H T T P work. Um, it's the first one on my requirements.txt file. Oh, okay. So could we say that when it's saying D, is that like your like your local? What should we say? Like a drive? Local, that D yeah. is a drive. Yeah. Oh, that then that could mainly be the reason because of course this is just something local. Maybe try removing that. Just remove remove that from your from your requirements.txt. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi to you. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so as I was saying, guys, if you do it from CLI, um, you get to see the logs real time, which is much easier to follow yes. than if you do it from Heroku. And if you get the errors, as Margaret is saying, the main important thing in Heroku is to learn how to read those logs because those logs will tell you exactly where the error is if you see that it's saying there is no specific package just go to your requirements.txt file find that package and know exactly why it is causing that error so i remember facing the same issue some time back and the main issue was because of my version of xgboost and i had like a version of xgboost i don't know one point something installed yet my model was using a different version of XGBoost. So just learn to read those those logs and they'll tell you exactly where your error is coming from in your deployment. So, uh, okay, I think I think this time it's, oh, this, this friend, I think I cheated the system because the, the, one, the other one was not funny. No, that's not it. Where, where, where are you selecting for the linking? Okay, so just copy that. You are saying if I queue right now and get him to attend Yes, exactly. So it's the kind of error I was expecting. If the CLA works, it did notice I was I had I had used up all my deploys for the day or the limit. Okay. So for those using MySQL, for this specific streamlit app, I was using MySQL as the source of my data. And that's why I got this error, cannot connect to MySQL server on localhost. So for those who are using my SQL, you'll need to add an add-on called ClearDB, and then you just go to your dashboard. There's uh, under under resources, under resources, 
and the resources down here there's atoms so you just search for clear db and at first this will give you an error because you maybe you don't have a credit card connected to your account so you should let me see okay so he just submitted an order form and that's when he told me i need please please verify your account to install the add-ons please enter a credit card so to actually use this clear db.mysql you need to add the con you need to add the details for your credit card it will not charge you it is a free add-on but you just need to add your credit card in order to use this clear db.my my sql so of course for adding your your credit card i think you just go to that's app information we have billing hotel domain account settings so you just go to account settings you go to billing and you add your billing you add your credit card add credit card from there okay so if you're going to take this approach let me just share with you a resource that will be really helpful so at the moment i, I try adding a friend's a friend's debit card i don't know if they refuse because of a debit card but i don't know i still got an issue with my postal code so if you guys if you actually get to connect a credit card to hiroko successfully maybe you can share that i tried a debit card and it didn't go successful so um, but, but if you do create a credit card, if you do connect to that credit card, okay. sorry, I'm looking for something else. Okay, so if you use it, if you create, let me just look for it again. I think I closed it. So connect Heroku. Yes, we have a very nice, that's a string lit one. They have one from Heroku. Wow, like, oh, like, like, no, but they look like. Yep. So if you connect it with a clear DB, so they just give you a few commands you need to do on your CLI just Heroku add-ons. I think there's, there's also a U, of course there's also a UI method, but yeah, so just create Heroku add-ons, create the clear DB, and then you do a configuration of the database URL, and then you set database URL to the specific MySQL clear DB. I think this is more like mirroring your MySQL, mirroring whatever you have in your MySQL so that it can also be in Heroku. Yes, Margaret, yes, I'm going to say. Um, yeah, so is there an easier way to create, to generate the requirements TXT file? Because it has like um, almost 350 uh, lines. And every time I delete the first line after building it from Heroku, I come back again, delete that line, and I, if I deploy it again, I find that line two is the one that needs that has an error, so it needs to be deleted again. Line three, four. Um, <laughs> how long will that take? It will take some time, and that's why the fact that you have three hundred and fifty. Wow! I, so you you are not running it from you're not I'm running it from our environment, right? I did. I set up a Python environment, and then I re regenerated the text, the requirements file. Okay, that's that's a lot of requirements. That's a lot. Of
Yeah. I don't know if if there's an easier way. I did see some I did see somewhere about using a Pprex that you have to install that. I don't know if it's any different or if it will just generate the exact same kind of file. So maybe has anyone tried to use something else different apart from apart from what do we call apart from Pprex? Do we have anyone who has used something apart from pip freeze? I've been using pip freeze. Yes, Gendros has something coming. I notice it's, it still has pip and freeze, so I don't know if that will be different. But yes, Margaret, you can try what Gendros has provided. Okay, so with that done, because I see you're asking how to connect a Streamlit app to your MySQL. Um, that's another tutorial, but on week zero, in week zero, we did we did show you how to do that. That's already in week zero so you'll notice from my from my from my streamlit application i am loading data from you see i'm loading data from a select all from tweet information which is already added at a table created in my mysql environment and then i am using an execute fetch which is now fetching that data so this is how i am getting data from my from my SQL and this DB that executed fetch again also shared with you in week zero is what does the getting from the MySQL. Is that yeah, yeah. So it just creates that connection, the D, the DB connection and uh, runs a query. So this was shared in week zero, just yes. Just refer back to the contents of week zero, maybe even a class on week zero. And um yeah, that should work. Okay, so Margaret, um, um, I don't know, 360 is also a lot, but just no. try. I don't think it will take so much time because not all, not all libraries cause the issues, just a few, just a few cause the issues. So you won't need to go through all the 360. But yeah, your requirements.txt file will cause a lot of issues, guys, especially when you are deploying to Heroku. So many things, even the version, sometimes the version. And like I've told you guys, if you are deploying a model that was built on an XGBO certain version and your requirement.txt file has a different version, that's another error for ages. But your logs can tell you this. So just look at your logs. So you just have to look at your logs and know exactly where is the issue arising from. So before I finish, before I finish, I see, yes, we already passed time, but before I finish, I wanted to mention something. For those of you, I think we'll do this later, but for those of you who are somehow not using a Streamlit application and instead using a Flask application, the proc file will slightly look different you won't have the streamlit run the proc file will look something like let me just uh, let me find a proc file for a flask application yeah so your proc file will just say that it's a web application and instead of whatever you had so you'll just have this command called g unicorn and then we have this is how you access your data so this is this is referring to my file and it is referring to my file and i think the first is it the first is it the first method in that file let me just see up up i think it was the name of that file here yeah, the name it's the file is called up so that's the name of your file and then on flask application it is also running it is also running this app.
it is running this app, which is a Flask app. I hope that makes sense. If you're using, this is for those who are using Flask application. We have not delivered any content on Flask application, so I'm hoping you have a lot of you. But just for those of you who are already using a Flask application, you'll notice why why I keep saying the app dot run. You'll notice here when I'm when when I was doing it locally, it was app dot run, and this app, as I've showed you guys, the one that I had uh, I had uh, created it at the top here. So just remember to change those names by using a Flask application. And I'm assuming you've already done it. If, you've done, if you're using Flask, I think you know what you're doing. So your profile is the only thing that would change for a Flask application. Yes, just yes, you can use Flask or Streamlit, but no, I can't share this repo. I'm sorry, I can't share this repo for somewhere else. And share this repo. This repo is actually on the exact same project you guys are doing. This was my project, my time. So it will be like giving you a few things we did, and I don't think that's good. So yeah, but in the end, in the end, we ended up creating. This is still hosted on Heroku. We created this back in 2020. I was still surprised to see it still active. Yeah, we created this back in 2020, and as we said, you yeah, are so yeah. Here we just deployed a model, and so. Of course, you want your app to do such the same thing. I don't know. I don't know if, if this will still work. Uh, Tuesday promotion day, no school day, uh, no state holiday, none. The dips. I don't know if this will still work. It's running. So, guys, uh, I told you I was going to give you a workaround, something we did back in our time, so that you don't have to actually connect it to, like, your database and stuff. Yes, it, it did work. Oh, my God, it still works. So, something you'd, you could do instead of using SQL to show your data. So, when we did it back in our time, we did use Pandas profiling, did everything in Pandas for profiling to actually explore or just give an overview of your data. And we just added that directly to our, our stream, no, 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 our Heroku deployed application, which in our case was a Flask application by then. And Pandas profiling gives you an update of everything you want to know. You also had a Power BI connect, no, no, that's too much. So yeah, you could just use Pandas profiling to showcase all your data. If you don't want to connect with MySQL, of it, of it, or if MySQL gives you that error that you've just seen, I had, and because I couldn't do the clear DB add on again, it wasn't much helpful on my case. So these are just a few of the workarounds you can you can do for that for Heroku deployment. Yeah, I hope that was informative, and I could say. That's it from the class. Are there any questions before we wrap up? Any questions? Yeah. Okay, that silence means you've understood. We okay, it's not great. Um the the command that was sent worked, but I got an error. <laughs> of another different, another different label, right? Yeah, but I think it's for the, could not find the version that satisfies the anaconda. So I'm guessing I need to update my anaconda. Or actually saw so this thing where um, instead of, you know, every time we do a requirement to the txt file, it does maybe like mm -hmm. anaconda is equals to and then the version. So you could either try and use like a less than sign. So it takes for anything less than that version or anything greater than that version that could also work. Sorry? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to say when you look at the requirements.txt file, where is mine? Uh -huh. You notice that most of them do this like uh, let me look for something that makes sense. Python date util is equals to 2.8.2. 2. 
This is very specific yeah. and it wants this specific version of of this library. So if this does not work, you could just simply change this file and try instead of using is equals to you try with like a less a less than sign. So it can look for any version less than that or you try the greater than sign and it can look for any version greater than that. Uh, okay, thank you. Try that. Yeah. So just to work around against the that requirements the txt file will be the main issue in this year of deployment. Anyway, any other question? Okay, so just say because of the silence, maybe can I ask, is it clear? Is it clear? Maybe I'll take three hands, three to five hands maximum. That is that would be really nice if we had about three to five hands. Okay, so that's two hands. Any other person? Is it clear? Is it clear, guys? One, two, three, four. That's four. One more person. If it's clear, then we can just conclude here. Ah, Ejid, thank you. <laughs> okay, so with that, I'd call that the end of the Heroku deployment hosting tutorial. If you have any issue, as always, just uh, re communicate on Slack and uh, the community will help. So one more thing before we end, let me just stop the recording. Let me stop the recording. One more thing before we 